studyfinds.org just taking this opportunity to poke holes in the coronavirus fear mongering narrative study COVID-19 much deadlier than flu 1.3 death rate among symptomatic patients and right there in the headline you see the misdirection Researchers say if same number of Americans contract coronavirus by end of 2020 as those who catch the flu, as many as 500,000 people will die. Conservative estimate of 20% of population infected would mean anywhere from 350,000 to 1.2 million deaths by years. And really, have the propagandists not given it a rest? Didn't, didn't they give this up when the calculations for death tolls went way down when they had to admit that 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 model from the UK, it had to come out and say, oh yes, our methodology was flawed. Now, symptomatic death rate, like what, they're totally missing the point in conflating these statistics. And it's so obvious. Now, is it more deadly or not than the flu? Like this is by fear, this is so, study author, Anurban Basu, professor of health economics, and Sergachis Family Dow, director of the Choice Institute at the UW School of Pharmacy. Anytime someone you know has that much stuff like in their, you know, title, you go, this is this is a fabricated position of authority. And no, this is not deadlier than the flu. This is this is like and, and again, it, it is kind of subjective how you count this, right? Like in this month, right now, if we say that the average death rate in the United States is uh is even say 1500 people a day, right? And that's 4,500, I'm sorry, 45,000, right? In, in 30 days in a month. And that puts it on par with a regular flu season. So if you look at it in, in, in that sense, okay, it's in the realm of as deadly as the flu. If you look at it as another flu entering the human Petri dish that is eventually going to have its place with the rest of our seasonal flus, then you go, yeah, well, okay, so over time, the coronavirus is going to kill, you know, okay, hypothetically, worst case, in the most inclusive way of looking at the honest numbers. And by the way, this, first of all, this main statistic, 1.3% of the death rate, they're, they're slipping in symptomatic patients. And they're ignoring the fact that most patients are completely asymptomatic. Which, is this true of the flu? I don't know. Probably. You know, most people who get the flu, but is what we have as a unique phenomenon is a spread of a virus where the majority clearly have no symptoms. With the flu, most people who carry it, are, you know, have some symptoms, but a lot of people who get even the regular seasonal flu don't show any symptoms and can be carriers. But this is a unique feature of this, and they're deliberately ignoring this. Because if you get it and you're asymptomatic, you're not going to become a symptomatic patient later and then be in this, oh my gosh, you have a 1.3 risk of dying from it category. And first of all, this is not done by a study that looked at the actual death statistic criteria. This is, oh, it's 1.3%. No. So, but even if you give it to them that this is the, this is the reality Okay, so Corona is going to work its way through society and kill 1.2 million people. Now, this, this, is, this is bullshit. This is, a, this is an absolute nonsense statistic. But even if you want to give them this, it's still less deadly than the flu. The flu comes back and kills about 40,000 Americans every year. That's 400,000 people in 10 years. That's 1.2 million people in three decades. Boom, you're at 1.2 million deaths just in three decades, is something that's going to keep going and keep killing more people. Whereas the coronavirus is a singular event, as a singular virus that is going to work its way through the population and by their worst estimates, cause this many deaths. This is totally unrealistic because the majority of patients are asymptomatic. They're not included. This is more fear-mongering. And I'm, I'm shocked that they even put this up now. That, that, that they're, that, that I, what is this? I, I mean, I have to wonder, is this, is this website like just another bought and paid for thing like Snoke that we, you know, we showed you how, how discredited they are? Again, the point is 
you have to see through the, the lies for yourself. All of these statistics are designed to manipulate you. So I don't know. Do they, do they have any? So this is a stat that the, the, the study says this is a staggering number, which can only be brought down with sound public health measures. So what they're yeah, anytime someone says, and, and this is why we have to what they're talking about is government action here, justifying government action. Be afraid to justify the lockdown. So according to the estimations, I don't know, let's go, let's go, let's go ahead. Let's give them this. Let's get into the numbers. Circling back to the comparison between COVID-19 and the flu, according to these estimations of the same number of Americans are affected with COVID-19 by the end of 2020 as documented flu cases in 2018 to 19, close to 500,000 people would die from COVID-19. However, COVID-19 is considerably more contagious than the flu. So a conservative estimate is that 20% of the population will become infected by the end of the year, assuming social distancing and other preventative measures are continued. A 20% infection rate would mean anywhere from 350,000 to 1.2 million American deaths. And again, I mean, I got to get out my calculator here. Like just, just to, just to, ch I'm just checking my own math here, right? Cause I'm, I'm doing this, like looking at this going, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous off the top of my head, but let's, let's see if we can back this up with some statistics or some, some other crunching of the numbers. There are 330 million Americans. So divided by five to get 20%, 20%, that's 66 million Americans if 20% are infected, right? Now, if you multiply this times 0.013 to get, so we're, we're looking at a huge number here. That would, now, then that would be with a 1.3% death rate, that would, we're looking at 858,000 uh, deaths. That, that's huge. We're still talking less deadly than the flu altogether, but let, let's look at some more realistic numbers because what they're saying is that this would be if, if those 20% infected were all symptomatic, they are not, they are absolutely not. So we have to take this statistic down by a whole other factor. And this is such an obvious lie in the manipulation of the data. I wonder if they're just making a mistake. And they're going to, well, we put out the mistake that, you know, happened to favor our narrative. Have, oh, yeah, the rich got richer and the poor got poor. Oh, whoops. We screwed up the statistics again and allowed for a forced unemployment shutdown that led to all the economic manipulation and the ripoff. I didn't mean to get into the story this this deep. But since we're getting into the numbers, we're picking them apart. So, again, let, let, you know, what, what, were the, what were the estimates? It was that 86% of people who get COVID-19 are not symptomatic. Let's, 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 let's round up for the benefit of the doubt here and say it's just 80%. 80% of carriers are not symptomatic. So 20% are. That means that 858,000 number has to now, again, be divided by five. Now we're down at 171,000, 171.6. So no, less deadly than the flu. Again, in what five years time the flu average forty thousand deaths per year five years of the flu boom more deadly than this so if it well let's let's even go with the worst let's say this is let's say every american gets this okay let's say you got we're gonna go 330 million americans 330 million americans let's say every one of us gets exposed to the coronavirus. First of all, you divide it by five or how many of us are completely asymptomatic. Now what you're left with, now this is this is if everybody gets it. How long is it going to take for everybody? They're saying 20% is the infection rate if we don't do anything. So this is worst case, giving it the, the, the virus all the credit in the world that it takes five years to then get out to 100%. So we got 66 million Americans who get this who show symptoms times 0.013 for a 1.3 percent death rate. If you believe that, now we are back at our number of 858,000. I don't know where they get the number up to 1.2 million. They must they must be using some other range of numbers. They said 350,000 to 1.2 million over five years. Now, just 
again, to take this down, to put it in perspective, we're going to add one more number to the equation here. If it's 858,000, let's, let's, let's go divided by five years, right? Divided by five again equals, so we're back to 171,600 per year. Divided by 300, excuse me, divided by, let's see, 171600 divided by 365 equals 470 deaths per day. 470 deaths per day. That's significant. That is that is that is nothing to sneeze at. That is that is not just a statistic. That is a tragedy. 470 extra dead Americans per day. But here's the other calculation. Here's the other number that we have to add into this. How many Americans die on a daily basis? Jim knows this number. 7,500. 7,500. That's our normal turnover. 330 million people. What do they die of? Obesity. Heart attacks. Diabetes. Cancer. Diabetes. Chronic conditions, more than anything else, are the leading causes of death in the United States. And of these people dying from coronavirus, as we know, allegedly, and we, and, and, you know, we brought you the story last week of the tragedy. There was a guy who was skydiving. He jumped out of the airplane and his parachute didn't open. And right before he hit the ground, he died from coronavirus. So, you know, you have to count those in these statistics here. If you, if you look at the people who are dying from coronavirus, these are people who a lot of them are actually dying from other things where they just had coronavirus present. That's what, the, these statistics are absolute nonsense right now because people with just Coronavirus symptoms are being counted as coronavirus deaths. If you go to the hospital and you are going to die of diabetic complications and you had coronavirus when you died, they're counting you as a coronavirus death. So what we're going to see in the legitimate statistics when they come out later, I don't think they're going to be able to manipulate or fake this too much, but is there is there an actual surge in that number of 7,500 per day? As Ron Paul pointed out, well, gee, uh, as you have these extra deaths per day, why are the death numbers from pneumonia going down? Why are the death numbers from other flu complications going down? Because they're counting this instead. This is not anywhere near what they are telling you it is. I am going to go out on a limb here and bet that with any kind of honest interpretation, when we get the numbers, I, that we already have just commonly accepted when, when this analysis is, is, is understood. This is less deadly than the flu. And I say this not to say that the coronavirus isn't deadly, that it's not a real problem, but that it is a misdirection of attention and resources. And that is being used as an excuse to rip you off, to take away your rights in the name of government. There is no justification for this whatsoever and because of this misdirection people are going to die needlessly that is why those of us who realize what a hoax this is not the virus itself the fear while you're around, around it making no mistake this is a hoax because they are getting you to misdirect your attention so that they profit regardless of the fact that more people will die when i say that more people will die let me be absolutely clear not just the people who will die from the economic hardship we have more children going to bed hungry in America than ever before because of this forced unemployment crisis. We have healthcare workers out of a job because elective surgeries that could be pushed back are now non-essential. And of all the places, yes, hospitals are forced to comply with government regulations as opposed to doing what they know what would be best for actual health of the people they're supposed to be serving, you, the people. Of America. No, we are going to suffer because of this misdirection, because Americans are not taught statistics in high school. We are not taught economics. We are not taught civics. And any one of those would prevent us from being vulnerable to this kind of manipulation. So please, please, please don't buy the fear mongering. Don't buy the bullshit. If it gets thrown in your face, be able to fight back and say, no, you have to read between the lines of these statistics. You have to see how these statistics are being manipulated so that we do not allow ourselves to be vulnerable to the exploitation that we are experiencing today. I hope we can learn from this whole experience.